Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Seacourt Tennis Club for the 2024 British Ladies Open Championships. My name is Ben Gatenbeek. I will be talking you through the match this afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for joining us wherever you happen to be around the real tennis world. And apologies for the slightly delayed start proceedings uh, today. Uh, there was a, a plate doubles final that was being played immediately prior uh, to this match. Uh, and that went, uh, went to three sets, a very close first set. Um, and that's why we are slightly delayed starting here. But we are underway now. And the players are just knocking up and getting ready. The uh, galleries are filling up fast here at Seacourt. We've had a fantastic event so far this week. Uh, we've had matches since Thursday. And some new talent shining through, I think, performance of the tournament so far probably belongs to uh, Oxford's Izzy Marshall uh, who came through at Jess Garside in the quarterfinal stage and played a semi-final against Claire. So let's introduce uh, the players. Starting with the defending champion and ladies world number one Claire Fay, currently a professional at the Oratory School, uh, involved in bringing lots of the juniors and students there onto the Real Tennis Court, introducing them to Real Tennis for the first time. Great to see the revival that Oratory School has had over the last few years. Playing off a handicap of 6.6, .6, uh, and she has a handicap court adjustment for C Court of 1.7. So for those of you who aren't familiar yet, that's based on all of her past performances here at Seacourt. Um, it means that on average she's 1.7 points worse than her handicap when she plays here at Seacourt. So it means it's a not a particularly uh, easy court for, for her to be playing on uh, for her standard. Uh, her career highlights, Ladies World Championship. Uh, since uh, 2011 has held that continuously winning first in 2011 and defending it on six further occasions equaling Penny Lumley's uh, record for most world championship defences uh, and that top one there the Australian Open that's the open uh, category not the ladies category she made the quarterfinals of that uh, this year back in January At this particular tournament, uh, Claire has been absolutely dominant over the past two decades. Apart from that 2016 uh, tournament, which she did not enter because uh, she was having her daughter Sophie at the time, uh, she has been here and won it basically every time she's entered back to the earlier years most recently the last two editions playing Tara Lumley 2020 and 2021 not held due to COVID-19 of course and so Claire first won this tournament in 2010 and only that 2016 she has not successfully defended it uh, ended it. Coming into this match, she has been in Australia uh, a few weeks ago for the Australian Ladies Open. That tournament was held in Hobart. Normally it's held in January, but uh, this year the men's and women's Australian Opens were separated so such that the women's could be held shortly after the second ever edition of the Ladies Bathurst. And 
Bathurst played just in that tournament. She's not eligible to play the Bathurst because she is a professional. Uh, and she won through beating Leia van der Zwellman in the final 6-2-6-1. Six, six, Her opponent today is Ladies World number 3, Tara Lumley. Only 40 minutes late. She's playing off a handicap of 25.2. And her court adjustment here for C court is 0 0.9, which is slightly better than Claire's, but her handicap overall is <laughs> around 19 points worse. So Tara is an Open champion. She won the Australian Ladies Open in 2020. There was an addition that year because, again, that's held in January. Uh, and so it was not affected by COVID. Um, that year, Claire was not present. It was the first time in four years that Claire had not been present at an Australian Ladies Open. Also won the US Ladies Open in 2013. At this tournament, again, she's made the final uh, in this tournament the last two occasions. Uh, both times coming up against her opponent here today, Claire Fay. So this will be the third time that these two have played in a British Ladies Open final. And her form coming into this match, she's also been over at the Bathurst Cup and Australian Ladies Open uh, in the last few weeks down in Australia. Uh, also playing at Leia a couple of times and losing on both occasions. Finally, the head-to-head -head between these two. Uh, they've played 13 times and Claire has been the victor on all 13 occasions, including three times here at Seacourt. So if you look down that list, uh, none of those sets in those last five meetings, uh, Tara has gotten more than two games. So anything more than that uh, will be improvement for her. Of course, she'd always love to, to win it and love to, to get over Claire. But uh, one thinks that it may be the case that Claire is too strong on this occasion. But this is sport. This is real tennis. Absolutely anything can happen. Our marker today, as all this ladies week, will be Drew Lyons from the Seacourt Club Tennis Club. The final of the Ladies British Open singles. At the receiving end, please welcome Tara Lumley. <laughs> At the service end, please welcome the Ladies Current Singles World Champion, Claire Fay. This final is the best of three six game sets. Play the level. First game level. Let's get underway now. Team up. Going through the early exchanges here, the match will settle into a distinct rhythm after the first few games. So Claire's 
progression through this tournament so far. She played uh, her semi-final match against Izzy Marshall, uh, who herself beat the seeded Jess Garside in what was the upset of the tournament, as we mentioned before. Uh, and it was a great experience for Izzy coming up against the world champion, but Claire was way too strong, winning that match 6-love, six 6-1. Six so, worse than the yard chase here. As we see Tara at the service end for the first time. As that one comes off the bando, the chase is worse than the yards. Anything into the hazards wins the point. A bit fortuitous for, for Tara there, but she has a chance here to take the first game of the match. has been so strong at over the years it's just her accuracy hitting the ball into that forehand corner off the return of serve she gets the perfect line and length off of it second gallery juice So Tara's progression through her matches, uh, she played against Sarah Vigras in the semi-final, having beaten Minty Oldham in her quarter-final. That was Sarah's first time playing a competition match in a, uh, a year and a half, 18 months. Serves advantage, she's the been second off gallery. With the birth of her daughter Isabel. Fantastic match, and Tara came out the victor. And the game. Nicely controlled by Claire there. Not First rushed, not the panicked. Server. Ball's up in the air, nice and easy. Understood where Tara was going to be and just killed it into that corner. With uh, Sarah's absence from the game, uh, Tara and Claire have been playing doubles together uh, a lot over the last uh, little while. They played in the Doubles World Championships in uh, Ballarat in 2019 uh, and Oratory in, uh, in 2023. Claire played with Sarah at Fontainebleau 2022. 15 30, chase 4 and 5. 40 15. Oh. 
Stroke. Game receiver, two games to love. Couple called strike by Drew. things with Claire, just the way that she pushes the ball into the corners, and she does this when she plays in the open competitions as well. She's so unrelenting, you have to run to the sides of the court all the time, which under so much pressure. the service end as we start this match. Claire's not really looking for any gallery chasers yet. Not under that scoreboard pressure to find those gallery game chasers. To it's the first game to Tara. One she game is to two. On the board. Yeah, she's been finding that top of that net tape uh, a few times. She so says, we work our way into this match. Hasn't fully found the correct height to be playing yet. I imagine that as the match progresses, that will get fixed pretty quickly as she will adjust to the court and the conditions and the balls. So there is a sizable contingent of both the Vigrass slash Fay uh, and Lumley families present here today. Uh, Tara's parents, Colin Lumley and Penny Lumley, are in the side galleries, as is Clay Claire's parents, Chris and Gail. Two and three. Back live. Perfume, Chasey Yard. Chasey Yard here. Claire's defence oh, is solid. It takes a lot to get past that volley. She's so good in the air. One of the things with Claire is that her game is so well rounded. It's probably perhaps a more traditional game than some of the up and coming youngsters we see on the, the men's circuit these days. Textbook style that you can. Uh, if you're learning the game, you, you can learn a lot from. And uh, so, talking about family, family contingents, um, 
player's sister Sarah is also here. They'll be playing together in the doubles later this afternoon. Receiver lead 40 30, change two. I think her other sister Jen has been around. So great to see the families out supporting. Great to see a big packed crowd here at Seacourt. This now for a two game lead. 3 1 player manages to get this point. And the game. There she does. It's really Pushing Tara into that backhand corner. One. She's had a lot of success there so far this match. Tara with that double-handed backhand. I mean, she doesn't quite have the same amount of reach on it. Change one and two. As we've started to see some chase statistics coming into the game, Claire's chase lengths are some of the shortest on the circuit. It's that perfect length and really putting Tara under pressure in both those corners at the moment. And that's a fantastic shot from Tara. Claire's been pushing her around but she responds by placing that ball onto the base of that timbre. Fifteen. Forty fifteen. This is the shot that um, Tara plays on the base of the hammer just before. Let's see a replay of that. A little bit too much angle for Claire. <laughs> I guess the correct play is to cut that off before the timbre, but that's very, very bold tennis. Got the best too. Make sure you stay the same size. Well, that's Claire is back down the service end with a short chase. Volley is just sublime. Four games to one. She has so much control. Such little racket head movement. That's all that it needs to be. When you're playing someone who on paper is a lot better than you, it just puts you under so much pressure to try and do something with every ball. Kind of what led to Tara's unforced error there. So just have a look at Claire's volley here. Easy as you like, just the perfect weight on it. Gets the racket prepped nice and early. 
a little bit of frame on it as well, but such a great example of how to play the game. Steve Lee, 40 love, Hazard, worse than a yard. So Hazard chase now here for Tara. Again, worse than a yard means that she doesn't have the option for hitting at Hazard Galleries either, so we can see how she plays this one. Game to receiver. It doesn't end up getting a chance to because that turn of serve by Claire is so accurate. Tara hasn't really found a reliable way to either prevent that shot on the return of serve or um, play that third stroke in the rally even better. Drew was ducking out of the way the yard worse than last. Um, had that shot. Uh, he had awarded a stroke to Claire. Sorry to Tara. Because he thought he'd hit the net post. Um, you know it came over. As you can hear Drew saying he didn't know it came over. So this is that ball that we're talking about, which Drew didn't quite see. He's just gone out of the way. His set point. I'm just going to rewind that one there. A yard worse than last gallery. Let's see, it has hit that top of that net cord on the way through. Anyway, set point. First set. So Claire does take that set. Six games to one. Second set level. So she has that first set, just needs one more to keep hold of that British Open title. It's just been a yet another dominant display by the Ladies World Champion. Has so much control, so much time on the ball. Thirty love. Forty love. A very quick game at the start of this second set. First game, second set. That serves points one up at 89% over the course of that first set. That's an incredible statistic. Which means that Tara is not having any luck at all down that hazard end. Hazard worse than the yard. Apology there, it's just tipped over the net cord. I think what's happened as the course of this match is Glares. Uh, Adjusted from the bottom of the net cord to the top of the net cord. It's going to be a few fortuitous ones. It's just missed the grill high. It's an awkward ball for Tara. And Claire finesses that into the forehand corner. She's so 
cool and calm in her play. It's been fantastic to watch. 30, 15. So I'm just going to take you, this is from inside the markers box and that point just towards the end of the first set. You can see Drew just getting out of the way of the ball as it comes in. Comes in with a lot of pace. So he ducks quite late, it clips over the top of the net. He's assumed that it's fallen <coughs> down the side of the net because he's not got his eyes on it. He's looking into the side galleries and he looks up. Checks the net to see if there's anything there. That's why he's a little bit confused. Uh, but we eventually got the correct call. We believe 40-15, Hazard, No harm done. But that's, that's the, the risk that you take when you mark from the net. Game to receiver. Two games to love. Now up to a two love lead. And still doesn't really look like Tara has found questions to uh, for Claire to have to answer about her game yet. Fifteen love. She hasn't really found a way to put Claire under that much pressure, but then again people have been all wondering that question for the last fifteen years. Almost found the winning gallery there, just going for the grill, just trying to find some targets. Just can't quite seem to get just a few more inches of accuracy. Just to put it into one of those targets. And against someone like Claire, you really can't be afford to be missing those. Let's see the numbers behind that first set, lasting 20 minutes. As we saw before on the mini stat, the serves one up at 87% for Claire. Tara just getting 12 points in that game and no targets. That average chase length from Claire, 4 and 5. is very Three short. 40-15, chase, worse than 6. Great stuff from the world champion. Tara would love to find a few more targets, especially when she does get down this service end. Thirty forty. See against most other people Tari playing against those two shots into those two corners uh, are both winners, especially here at Seagull where the ball doesn't do much off the back wall. It doesn't bounce high, it just comes down quite severe. But Claire is reading it so well at the moment. And again. Tara does take that one. A little bit fortunate with the ball that's come off the bottom ledge of the 
second gallery, but she will take it nonetheless. Players miss hits are turning out to be winners at the moment. She is unstoppable. Ball in the up with 15 up. Both these two players will continue to be in action uh, over the rest of this month. There is, of course, playing for Phase Forces in the IRTPA Super League, sponsored by FLM. That will be taking place at Queen's Club starting on Wednesday. These two are playing together in the ladies' rackets doubles open uh, on next Saturday. And both are contesting oh, the for the Ladies World All Rackets the title. The last gallery. To be held at the Queen's Club at the start of May. So plenty more for these two to be playing. Lumley has not missed an opportunity to find those hazard galleries when playing off a chase. She's looked for them every opportunity she could get. It's just a fairly surefire way of getting chases, really. Just because, or winning chases, rather. Um, it's not easy to go up and defend those hazard galleries when you're playing off a chase. Takes Claire's skill completely so out of the 15, equation. 40, hazard one and two. Gains the server. <laughs> server leads by three games to one something. It's so hard sometimes playing against those better players. Just struggling with that one off the timbre and scream of oh no she wanted that one she felt that she could have closed out that game but just slight error hazard chase two that goes out for a hazard chase meaning Tara will get the serve again very soon That ball there has just gone into the wall at a slightly funny angle. So instead of hitting the main wall first and going out to... I mean, if you hit the main wall first, it would have come in towards Claire, and that's what she was um, lining up for. If it instead, it just hit the back wall first, and the spin took it the other way, and that's what lost her feet. No strokes, hazard chase. Two, hazard two. So 
So Hazard Chase now. Oh. How's Tara going to shape up tactically here? Three. Again, one wonders if she should be bolder on that second serve. You see all the top guys, when they're playing off a hazard chase, they will put that second serve as a railroad. Such that anything else is not good enough. 30 love. Anything else on that hazard chase just gives your opponent way too much to work with. So the percentage shot. They reckon is another hazard as Claire hits another dead on. Game receiver, four games to one. They're just piling on the points now. Four games to one, just needs two more games. As we've seen throughout that match, that volley return of serve into that forehand corner has been absolutely faultless this entire match. Just putting on her under so much pressure. That accuracy, that line. There's she could hit a penny. Stroke. With the way that she's playing. Place a penny on that chase three line about a foot from the wall, and it'll get smacked every time by Claire at the moment. Just that spot there. So the place has been unrelenting to that. What does Tara really need to do to stop that ball from coming? Because it's seemingly coming from every type of serve. Maybe some demi PKs, maybe some high serves. Let's try and put Claire closer to that back wall. Maybe that's a, a solution. Server leads 40 love, chase better than two. So 40 love here with a short chase. Off the chase and the game, five games to one. Five one second set. That ball coming out to about two and three. Not good enough to win. Perfectly weighted shot, yes again from Claire. Fifteen up. So those point serve stats there, Tara's actually leading in that statistic. And that's because Claire's just not worried about trying to force chases here. She's not trying to aim for the gallery, she's consistently hammering down that line into the forehand side. she needs to do and then when, she, when the ball comes back down that main wall and she's chipping it into that backhand side three. just under so much pressure worse than three is the chase a nick serve off the railroad from tara second gallery exactly what she needed from there
rare miss from Claire goes high on the galleries. Katara the opening. Yeah. And Katara finds that has the gallery yet again playing off the chase. In one of the rallies of the afternoon. Good stuff from both players there. No, one of two, 30, 15. Serve was loose. Claire chose to volley it. She had the time to take it off the floor, and as it stands, she put it into the top of that net. So she Claire comes down the service end with a short chase. Just a reminder that there is more tennis for you today. After this match, uh, we will have a short break for about half an hour, during which they'll play the final of the handicap doubles. Uh, leads, 40, 15, and then, uh, and then they will be back here for the doubles final at or around two o'clock. So don't get anywhere. There'll be plenty more tennis for you today. It's that match between Claire and her sister Sarah against Tara and Jess Garside. Fantastic rally finally ends. The ball into the net from Claire. Two games for five. And Tara ends up with her second game of the second set. I think in that rally, there's a pull on Claire's backhand that was very close to being down. And what a rally it was. Second gallery, Tila. of tennis just keeps improving here. And so now we reach Point, match point. For Claire Fay. So there we go. Match point, championship point. Claire Faye 
wins the British Open for the 12th time. A fantastic match against her great friend Tara Lumley. Waves to the crowd. Handshakes with Drew Lyons. A big fist pump at the end there. What a great final we have seen. Claire Fay is the victor. Two sets to love, 6-1, six, 6-2. Six, uh, we won't have a presentation uh, right now. Uh, we'll carry on straight and there'll be a, a short break while the doubles handicap uh, final is played. And I think a few people in the uh, galleries will be heading for the bar or for the restaurant in the meantime. So we'll have one last look at the key numbers of the match. 43 minutes for the whole match. Tara winning. Uh, well, in the end is just about a set's worth of points, just not in the right order. Well played. Well played, Claire. Uh, Claire Faye dominant through much of that statistics board. So we will leave you now here from the Seacourt Tennis Club. It has been an absolute privilege to call this match for you this afternoon. We'll be back at or around 2 o'clock p.m. UK time for uh, the final of the doubles. That will be between Claire Fay and her sister Sarah Vigras against Tara Lumley and Jess Garside. So don't go anywhere, go make yourself a nice cup of tea or a nice uh, coffee and we'll see you back here very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>